if we look at the bumper that's currently on the truck, obviously chipped up right there. And these tabs right here have been broken, so the previous owner just drilled into it and painted over. Kind of a smart idea, I guess, in a way. It's been touched up right there just with a touch-up pen. All these little scratches and nicks right there. And this has been hanging from some, for some reason. I guess it had a front license plate. Um, all these scratches right here. Scratches, paint peeling. Um, they try to do a touch up on it. And then this is where the bumper trimmed itself from my last set of 40s, or 40s. My last set of 2214 on 33s. So yeah, it looks kind of ugly, doesn't look good at all. And it is just scuffed up and scratched. I've been meaning to get a new bumper, but I just really never had motivation slash incentive to do it. But I figured uh, I wouldn't want somebody to take a truck home like this. So this was a perfect time to get another bumper and get it repainted. All right, so I did watch a video on how to remove this, but I'm not gonna lie, I've never done it, so I'm not really sure what I need to do. But we'll find out together. These are the tabs that we need to remove. fresh new bumper looks way way better than this beat up scuffed one now here's a dilemma I never liked I was never a fan of this uh, plastic black plastic piece right there so I didn't install it on the new bumper in which I think it looks fine um, but now you can actually see all the way through so part of me kind of wants to put that black piece back on here let me know in the comments below what you guys think should I just leave this spot blank uh, whoever wins this truck can put a light bar in there or should I put the black piece in there to hide uh, prevent people from being able to see the little uh, frame right there with some of the wires yeah, let me know in the comments below what you guys think and then um, from there I'll probably make the decision of whether if we want to go ahead and leave this blank or put that black plastic piece back on. But yeah, so far looks good. I'm really glad that the little cut mark is gone and uh, we're about to find out if we're going to rub or not.
out pretty bad, as you guys saw. I'm gonna need to cut that much of the bumper. Honestly, I, 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 I hate to cut a brand new bumper, but to make it fit, we're gonna, we're gonna have to do it. But on a second thought, I might just leave the bumper the way it is because the winner might actually want the stocks on here instead of the stance. So, stocks can definitely clear uh, with this bumper. So I'll just drive really carefully for the next couple weeks and then uh, avoid trimming the bumper. I want to give a huge shout out to Rick's Paint and Body for getting that bumper painted within a week. I know we were on a time crunch, so I really wasn't even sure if, we, if they were going to be able to do it. But they got it done within, I think, like less than a week. So huge, huge shout out to them getting that done in such a short time period. And also, if you're watching this, we have less than 10 days left in the giveaway. So make sure to go get entered. You guys have seen all the stuff that has been done on that truck. Head gaskets, ARP studs, turbo, new injectors, paint match, new bumper, new transmission lines, like upgraded transmission lines, upgraded radiator, just the whole nine yards. Everything has been upgraded and updated. So, and it's also got a six-speed transmission, EFI live tuning. I mean, that truck is a stout and it's pre-DEF. So it is a sought after vehicle. So make sure to get entered. You have less than 10 days left. I'm coming in hot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be installing the lift pump on the LOI. And who are we here with today? Armando. <laughs> <laughs> Putting you on the spot. Yeah. Yeah, we got Armando here with Elite Innovations. Make sure to hit him up, follow them on Instagram. All right, quick status update. Got the heat shield out from the downpipe right here. And we got the downpipe finally loose. So just gotta finagle it and wiggle it out because I've been watching Truck Master's videos and he just said that you just gotta finagle it, wiggle it out because it will come out. Um, the issue that we did run into was the down downpipe was pretty much stuck on the turbo. Oh, and holding Ashley with the finagle and got the downpipe. Somebody's talking crap about your country. Oh, no, they ain't. <laughs> it just comes loose. <laughs> Somebody said America sucks. Uh, if I can't get it, it might. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is a, this is literally the hardest bolt in America. <laughs> this, is a, this is a terrorist bolt. <laughs> America, you've witnessed it. This is the ISIS truck right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Iran bolt right here. So we finally got that turbo out. Wow, that was pain in the... That was a lot more work than I thought. And we are now getting ready to drop in the Ryan's Diesel Services 64 millimeter turbo. We're doing a four and a half inch BDS lift. I know we debated on either four and a half BDS or a six inch zone, but I decided that I was gonna do a BDS lift, lifetime warranty. And All right guys, so here we have our much needed fleece 
transmission cooler lines. Whoa, <laughs> these things are pretty heavy duty. All right, so we have the small, medium, and long. And this is pretty much the diagram you wanna follow. What stickers? The thousand stickers JW's got. <laughs> we got the redhead gearbox right there with kryptonite pitman, stock pitman, and stock gearbox. Here we have everything laid out. Look at the difference between the factory Y bridge and HSP. Yeah. Boom! Check it out. We got the candy red powder coat. For accent colors, I chose gold. It looks sweet, in my opinion. And uh, it does kind of remind me of... does kind of remind me of Iron Man. Just to recap, this harness has been pretty much redone. Any kind of connectors we saw, we swapped out with the good ones from my old harness. So this should be perfect. I mean, I spent a lot of time wrapping the Tessa tape. This is like heat resistant tape. Um, this is the brand, this is the type. Put the new engine harness, connected everything, made sure everything was good. Only thing I need to go over is, I uh, just gotta go over and re tighten some of these clamps over there but everything is good let's go ahead and start this truck and see if it resolved the issue here is the old thickum here is the new one that works this is the fuel line so the fuel does go through your thickum and i recently found out the reason why fuel does go through your thickum is so it cools it down and i i was wondering like why wouldn't they use coolant to cool it down but we were talking about it and because we we're thinking coolant can get up to 200 degrees usually my truck operates around 185 so maybe we're thinking that's a little bit too hot for you know that's that's too hot uh, of a fluid to go through maybe diesel fuel is much cooler whenever it goes through this module and cools it down <laughs> Set the camera down and give me a hand. Oh, it over. oh shit. Look how dirty this thing is. <laughs> Years of Georgia driving, right? It's a pain to cut, like our pain to tear. <laughs> Max flow. Nice, hey man. Still kind of truck for a thumbnail. Now I got to figure out a way to finagle this in between here. It was kind of hard because I have this cooling crossover pipe from this HSP. Maybe I should have put that on here first. So we got Dylan over here with his 2008, right? Uh, it's a 10. It's a 10? Okay, it's a 2010 LMM Duramax. So this was like literally the year before it became an LML. 
Now this is probably one of the cleanest LMLs you will see, and it's a beautiful color. Victory red, except his truck is way cleaner than mine. <laughs> it's an old farm truck. It's a work truck. But uh, what we're doing today is, that's like a 2020 Denali wheel, isn't it? Cool, so that's the 2020 Denali stocks, and we are just gonna trade. He's been wanting to do stance for a while, right? Uh, and then, you know, I figured, you know, let's switch it up. I, I really enjoyed the, the Bubba setup I had on my AT4. So, on my LOI, I finally got it running, and I'm kinda, in a way, converting this into more of my daily, kind of a work truck in a way. <laughs> We have all these trucks. One, two, three, four. And none of them are drivable at the moment. Pop, he heard something pop under the hood. And now it won't start. Nothing. No leaks. Uh oh. Oh, so there's something smoking over there. Where? Oh, that's where it's at. It's something. That's why I told you I smelled smoke. Ooh, bro, this is your fickum. It is your fick <laughs> It is my fickum. It is your fickum. It popped out. L look at how swollen it is. I hope you guys can see that. You see the smoke? Oh, and it's swollen. Yeah, we're not touching that for a while, bro. Oh, yeah. Uh, disconnect the batteries for sure right now. Oh, wow. Nice. Okay, they actually made it look legit. Like, they made it look new ish, because it was pretty dirty before. Wow, I'm impressed. So the battery is absolutely dead dead. So we gotta charge it with our Optima battery charger. And then we can find out if the Ficum worked. 